Hi, and thanks for choosing Pebblehost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can install DyneMap on your Minecraft server. The easiest way to sum up DyneMap would be Google Maps, but for Minecraft. And it will basically give you a view of your entire world. And this can also be 3D as well. And I'm going to show you all of that in today's video. Anyway, let's get right into it. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is actually make sure our server version is okay to use. So as DyneMap is a plugin, we do need to make sure that we are using a version that does actually support plugins. So if you're not sure which version you're currently running, scroll down to server type and click on the jar and pre-install menu. From here, you can then select paper, spigot or craft bucket. I'm going to select paper 1.18.2 and I recommend you pick paper as well as it is the most optimized. Once you've done that, click save and then you'll just need to restart your server. All right, so next we're going to actually start installing the plugin. So in the description, there'll be a link to this website. This is the official bucket page for DyneMap. So as of recording this, the latest file isn't actually 1.18.2. As if we go to the file tab, as you can see that 1.18.2 is currently in beta. However, it will be out in the near future. So you can find your version here, or if you are using 1.18.2, go to the top one and then click download file. From here, we'll then save it in our downloads, click save. And now the DyneMap jar file has completed its download. So then we need to go back to Pebblehost. From here, we can then go to the left and click on the file manager. And then once we're in here, we want to go into the plugins folder, click upload, file, and then find our DyneMap jar. So mine is right here, we'll select it and click open. It will then upload the file. And there we go, our DyneMap is now installed. So now from here, we just wanna restart our server. So click back. It'll take you back to this page where you can click restart. So now that our server is restarted, it means that the files have now been generated. So the first place we want to go to is on the left and it is the MySQL database. So click on it. It'll take you to this menu where you want to go to step one and simply just select DyneMap. It'll check your server for the files and it has found the file as you can see and then we'll click configure. And there we go. We now have our database set up. So once we've done this, we then want to click back. All right, so for the next thing, we'll actually need to stop our server. So go to the right and click stop. All right, so once your server is offline like this, we can then go to the left and then go all the way down to additional ports. Once we're in here, we then want to go to the left once again and click add port. It will give us some numbers here. And then for the description, I'm just gonna type in DyneMap. We actually want to copy these numbers so you can do that and then copy, and then we're gonna click back. So I actually recommend opening up a notepad. All right, so we've now got our notepad here. We're just gonna paste the numbers that it has given us in that notepad for later. And now we're gonna to go to the file manager on the left, into the plugins folder, into the DyneMap folder, and then we want to find configuration.txt. We can then go into that, and then you want to go through around line 349, Bear in mind, this might be a bit different depending on which version you're running, but it won't be too far away from here. You just need to look out for web server port. And then we're gonna get rid of these numbers and replace them with the numbers that we got earlier. And then scroll up to the top. And also if your server can handle it, I do recommend setting the def template suffix instead of low boost high, you want to make it high res. And this will make your map a lot higher resolution. So once you've set that, click save and then back and then we're just going to start our server once again okay so now we're actually going to start going to our dynamap site now i'm going to show two methods for this the first method will be if you have a domain and the second one will be the free method so if you have your own domain and it is connected to the server go to the left scroll all the way down to the tools menu open it and then go into reverse proxy once you're in here the page will look like this where of course you can read what it's for, but I'll explain it now. So what this means is that you can actually use your domain to get to your map instead of using your IP and then your port. And also one of the more important things is that you get an SSL certificate. And this means that it will work with HTTPS. So as it says, what you need for this is a domain. So for step one, you need to make sure your DNS is set up correctly. So just follow all of these steps. What I'm gonna show you is step two. So it's pretty simple. So just get your domain. 
paste your domain in here. If it is configured correctly, it will say on the right, configured correctly. And then you select your Dynamap port, which of course, mine is my only one. So once you have that, just click save. However, it does at the bottom, changes on this page may take a few minutes to be processed. So after it is done, wait a few minutes before you actually try going to the site. So what this means is I'll be able to go to this website and I'll be able to see my Dynamap. So then click save, and then we can click back on the left. Once that is done, you'll need to restart your server. All right, so it's now but a few minutes, so we're gonna make a new tab, and then we're gonna type in our domain just like how we did it before. And as you can see, it's taken us to our Dynamap page. And if we click on the link, you can see that it is just this. So it's a much more simplified and professional link that you can send to people. And it's a lot better if you do have a bigger public server. Anyway, let's get on to the free method. Once the server has loaded, we're actually gonna go to our Dynamap page. So where you find your IP, click copy IP. From here, we then want to put it in the URL. So take out your URL and put in your IP right here. And then these five numbers after the colon, you want to take out and then bring up your notepad. And this is where we put the numbers earlier. We can copy these numbers once again and then paste them after this colon. So it'll be the first bit of your IP and then the port for Dynamap. We can then press enter. And as you can see, it's currently black. Now this is because we haven't actually started a render. So first of all, let's join the server. So as you can see, we now have our Minecraft and our website right next to each other. And you can actually see on Dynamap that I am in the game. And I've zoomed in a bit, and if you see, you can actually see that I am moving around. Now it does have a little delay, but it is nothing major at all. So now in Minecraft, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do slash Dynamap and then we want to do full render. So we're now gonna run that command and Dynamap is gonna start loading the world around us. Now, of course, this will depend on how big your world is. One way you can make it a lot quicker is by setting a world border around the part that you actually want to render. If you go on our Dynamap website, you can see that it's actually loading pretty slowly. However, if we do zoom in, it does refresh itself. And as you can see, it's actually loaded quite a lot. However, currently it's 2D. It has got quite a bit of detail as it does mark each block individually, however, I want it to be 3D. So then we can go to the right, and as you can see on world, we can then select the green cube, which would be the surface, and this will mean that it is 3D. So once we click that, as you can see it's starting to load it in at the 3D view. So of course you will need to give it some time, as it is rendering your whole world in real time. We've given it a few more minutes, and as you can see it started to render a lot more of the map. If for some reason you do want to actually cancel the render, you can do slash Dynamap and then cancel render. What you can also do on Dynamap, if you go to the right, you can also go to the caves. If you click the blue cube, it will take you to the cave map. Now, as you can see, this is actually all built manually, so there actually is no caves. However, if you do this to your world, you will see quite a few caves under your world. You can also go to the right and do World Nether, both flat and 3D, and also the end as well. Now the progress is actually going pretty slow on this, and that's because this isn't actually the spawn area, as Dynamap will actually prioritise the spawn area. So as you can see, it is slowly getting to where I am, but of course it is prioritising the spawn area much more. Now these big blocks of water are really there, it's not a bug with Dynamap, and the end of the world is also here in the game as well. So if you just give it some more time, it will render the whole world. Now, of course, if you have built a lot of stuff around spawn, then this won't be a problem for you. So this is from a few hours in the future, and as you can see, it has loaded the map perfectly. And yes, the map is actually built like that. So all of those edges are actually in the game. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, and if it was helpful, definitely leave a like and also subscribe, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.